Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Stories Untold. Photosensitive epilepsy warning. A small portion of the population have a condition which may cause them to experience epileptic seizures or momentary loss of consciousness. <laughs> He's going to get good, I'm sure of it. I've only tried this a long time ago. I don't remember anything about this game. I watched a little bit of the gameplay, but I've only pretty much seen the episode one. The house abandoned, and I've only played episode one. <laughs> it is a very cool experience of a game. Hey, Litvarski, Insane Finn, Eldritch, Gabriel. Nobody else? think not. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Oh yeah, Beardy. Beardy was also out there. How did I like uh, Cat Lady? Uh, it was, it's a good story. Very disturbing, very creepy, also very depressing. I mean, barely anything happy happens in it, well, except until the end, but uh, <clears throat> otherwise, a really good game. I think, Gabriel, you always complain about horror games in general, because they are very manipulative kind of games, you know. But that's the whole, the whole thing about horror, it's a, especially psychological horror like this. They're supposed to be manipulative, and you hate that. <clears throat> Probably you won't care today, yeah, because you've changed a lot. For the better, that is. That's humanity in one word. <laughs> but, shall we get into the game? Oh, yes, we shall. Some commands may be case sensitive. Keep a lookout for hints. Devolver Digital presents. Welcome to the 80s, a new code production. In, all these people in. Very Stranger Things vibe, ain't it? Well, this is supposed to be like 80s, so it has that 80s vibe to it, which I like. 80s was a good decade, I swear. Yeah, anybody recognize this? The House Abandoned Interactive Horror Adventure. <clears throat> If you're wondering about those noises, they're the loading noises of this machine. The Futuro. You pull up to the driveway of the family holiday home and park the car. It's dark, but it's an idyllic as you remember from all that time ago. You remember being told to look in the club box before going in. It's good to be back. Inside is a key and a handwritten note from Dad. You take both. It's the key to the house. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi, son. Hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power and lights on. Also, found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy! The beginning kind of reminds me of Uninvited, except we don't crash the car. We just arrive here. But also in that game, you open a glove box to get items first before you get out of the car. You open the car door and step out. The house is grand, set perfectly amongst the trees. In front of you is the front door, and the yard stretches around the side of the house. The door appears to be locked. You will need to use a key. But I was... Try to go around the house, not go in the house. Uh, 
uh, how about go yard? You take a walk around the yard. Or around to the yard. The yard has been well maintained. You spend a lot of time here with your family on holiday trips. Good memories. It's an old house, but it's in good shape. Hmm. Hey, Nathan. You ba walk back around to the front of the house. What if, what if I say go back? Will you go to the back to the house? Yeah, front of the house. How do we get to the back of the house? The letter said that we should go to the back of the house first. Fire up the generator around the back to get power and lights on. Yeah. What if I... Oops. Gotta wait. I'm sorry, I don't understand. You see a generator on the back wall of the house. Uh, turn on generator. You switch the generator on and it whirs to life. The house is still dark. You insert the key and turn. The door lock clicks open. You step inside the front door, dot, dot, dot. You enter the house to the hallway. It's dark and you can't see anything. You feel a light switch next to the door, however. You flick the switch and the lights come on. Dot, dot, dot. The hallway is now brightly lit. There is access to the kitchen and living room here, as well as a set of stairs going up. You walk into the kitchen. The kitchen is tidy and well kept. There's a door to a utility room, but otherwise, it's just a kitchen. The utility room door is locked. You have no idea where the key could be. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Go back. You go back out the hallway. Okay. And the other access was the living room. Go living. You step inside the living room. A spacious and comfortable living room. We spend a lot of good time in here playing board games with the family. Warm and inviting. Uh, okay. Oops. Don't know what happened there. Look, table. Okay. Look floor. Look wall. Look TV. Okay. Go hallway. It's responding to my keyboard. So you hear two keyboards, me, my keyboard and a game keyboard. The stairway landing. There is a bathroom and two bedrooms, yours and your sister's. And pictures adorn the walls, images of happy times. Look, look, pictures. Family photos and holiday snaps are happy family. You step inside the bathroom. You are in the bathroom. There's not much to note, but it's all in good order. Oh, landing, not a hallway. You walk into your sister's old room. 
Your sister's room is in perfect condition, untouched since the last time you had seen her. Posters of her heroes and some of her own attempts at art adorn the walls. A few shells are crammed with fu cramped full of trophies. Her bed is drowned under a pile of colorful soft toys. A real nostalgia trip. Every soft toy she ever owned. Or has ever owned. Posters of all her favorite pop stars mixed with some of her own art. She was pretty good. She won a lot of trophies for dance and gymnastics. Talented girl. Uh. Which bedroom? Your or your sister's? I'm sorry, I don't understand. You walk into your old room. <sighs> your old bedroom. So many good memories in here. It's been reserved for so well. On the desk is a gift wrap box. A large gift wrap present. The tag says your name. Too bad we cannot read the tag. You unwrap the gift excitedly. You can't believe it! Dad has found your own computer, a future roll 128k plus 2. It's been preserved well in the attic and hopefully still works. I mean, we're playing on a future roll 128k. I mean, if you if you look at it, it says future roll 128k right there. I guess the advertisement of the computer that you're using in the game. Cool. Your old bedroom. So many good memories in here and it's reserved well. On your desk is a future old 128k plus two computer and a copy of the house abandoned. It's all still to be set up though. A copy of the game that we are already playing. Anybody get an inception feeling about this? A game within a game within a game. It's a new horror game called The House Abandoned. Looks ace. It's a Futuro 128K plus two with tape loader and a copy of The House Abandoned. You start to plug in the various cables and leads. The computer is all set up and ready to go. There is a game here too. You put the cassette in the computer and press play. I think I broke my computer, or maybe just... Huh. How are you still on if I just lost all electricity? Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. That's not the name of the game. Yeah, there's the name of the game. <laughs> You pull up to the driveway of the family holiday home and park the car. It's dark, it's clearly neglected. You remember being told to check the glove box before going in. Can't stand to be near this place. Hey, is alone? How is this working when everything fried? And also, it's more horrifying now because it was all happy and nice before. Now it's neglected and can't stand to be here. It's the key to the house. You don't recognize the handwriting. It says get out, 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 get out the car, get out the car, get out, get out the car, get out, get out, get out, get. You pull up to the driveway and blah blah blah. A warped car door open and fall out. The house looks abandoned. There is a yard to the side. Wood creaks in the wind. And all happy memories are gone from this place. There is no love here. Huomenta päivää, veritanssi. 
You step through the debris to the backyard. The grass is overgrown and weed crawl. Weeds crawl up the side of the house. It's not a nice place to be. You clutch the note, needing to look around. The woodwork is rotting, the paint is peeling. There's an old generator next to you. There isn't much fuel, but the generator starts up. Why did you start up as well? When I start... What? 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 Anybody else got a bad feeling about this? I'm keeping an eye on you, Pixar. You unlock the door. The click of the lock hurts to hear. I reluctantly step inside the front door. Pitch black, but your senses are punished more by the smell, stale air, and damp. This could not be less inviting. The note burns in your hands. You feel compelled to read it over and over. too dark to read, but it feels weird to do the touch. Afraid of what you might see, you flick the light switch. The lights flicker on and off. The walls are falling apart after years of neglect or worse. There are sneezes and... Upstairs, the sound of an alarm clock is blaring. Someone else is in the house. That can't be. Stop! Somehow the alarm stops, you can feel the panic set in. There's no panic here. It's so showing 9999 now. Someone is in the house, they should not be here. There's a kitchen and a living room adjacent and stairs leading up. The note feels disgusting in your hands. And the noise has stopped but you feel a presence. I can't read the note, it's bleeding. You enter the living room. The living room, although hardly an appropriate term. The furniture is threadbare and worn. The note is fixed in your mind. Dread fills the pit of your stomach. This is not a nice place. Furniture looks disgusting. There's no way you can sit on it. Red. The note, always changing, now reads, get through this. I don't care if you want to or not. I think it's a Sinclair. Because it's got a cassette tape in it. It's a future roll, 128k plus 2. And that's the same computer that we got in the game that I'm playing. It's poopy. You go into the kitchen. The kitchen stinks and feels completely unfamiliar. The tabletops are rusted metal, and there is a carcass on the table. There is writing on the wall, and the utility room door has a red X painted on it. In blood, the number 1986 is smeared across the wall. You look closer, but can't tell what it is, or what it was. The paper now feels fa like fabric. It's covered in blood. You can just make out the words, there is nothing for you here. In blood, the number 1986 is smeared across the wall. There's a red X on the door. You assume it's paint. Yeah, must be paint. Feels like the note. Then it's blood, all right. The door is locked. I can't get in there. Not yet. What? Your shoes are wet. They're still in the hallway. The noise has stopped, but you feel a presence. 
No feels disgusting. Sorry, I don't understand you what you're looking at. My shoes. I can't read the note, it's bleeding. You head up the stairs, they creak. Same but differ, differ dot end. The landing has access to your sister's sister's room. Your real room at the bathroom. Behind the door a phone starts to ring. You don't understand. Neither can be. Mine hurts so you stay tired. Voices spill out of the phone into the room. Whoever is in there should not be there. You need to hang up the phone. I do. Whoever. You consider the worst. Relief. Same but different. The landing has access to your sister's sister's room, your room and the bathroom. Pictures are all over the wall, but something is different about them. The note is now clean again. Simply reading, get in, get out. Ah, the good old in out, in out action. Huh? Naughty, naughty game. You're not scary, you're just naughty. The pictures are of your family. The eyes have been scored out on all. Scored out? Is that a different kind of phrasing? You enter the bathroom. Dot 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 dot. The bathroom feels disgusting. Every surface is covered in a layer of oily grime. The sink is a haven for all kinds of bugs. The note is impossible to read due to the black oil that now covers it. Ugh. It's disgusting. Rhyme and dead bugs. The taps won't budge. You can't bear to look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Jennifer's room is boarded up. You can't bear this. <sighs> Jennifer's room is boarded up. Hmm. I can't open it then. The door is bolted shut with a four digit combination lock. You grab the lock. The lock is rusted, not used in years. The key in your hand weighs heavy, an old heavier. You grab the lock and now can now input the code. Hey, holy money, momenta. Too bad the number is not ykkönen, ykkönen, kakkonen, hätä numero muista. Ykkönen, ykkönen, kakkonen, hätä numero muista. I wonder if any Finnish people are like now, ah, not that song, no, the horror, the horror. Anybody else remember that stupid jingle? Very tansi, Ulimoni, Litvarski, anybody? Insane fan. Well, I guess I'm going back in. Haven't actually heard that one. How old are you, Litvarski? Out of curiosity, asking for a friend. 28. No, you should have heard it then. Oli unohtanut tuo hätän numero laulu. Eikö se ennen ollut 000? Joo. Se vaihetti 112, koska se on yleinen skandinaavinen numero. Se on Ruotsissa ja Norjassa ja ehkä Tanskassa myös. Ainakin näin mä muistelisin, että kaikki vaihtui samaan aikaan. Tuli yleiseksi.
So Litvarski was saved from, from hearing that stupid jingle. Just look, look it up, Litvarski. You know. It should be, it's probably on YouTube. A year younger than me, you know what that means, right? Uh, not really sure. That he's just younger than you? Are you gonna say that he's the youngest here? Litvarski is the baby of the stream. Well, currently, yes, but if Mew ever... You know, you know if Mew ever appears here, then she's always the baby. <laughs> Sorry, I was in the middle of an intense fight. Not in real life, but in game. Can't recall the song. Ykkönen, ykkönen, kakkonen, hätä numero muista. Ykkönen, ykkönen, kakkonen. They played, it, played that shit everywhere when the uh, number was changed. Well, let's go to my room. Let's see who's gonna enter here with us while we're in here already, apparently. Door's closed. I'm sorry. Open the door. Couldn't say get out, then. Why is the... Why is it red light? Why is it always red? You enter your bedroom. The bedroom feels utterly familiar. The walls are damp, but you've been here before. In front of you, a lone person sits in front of the computer screen. The lamp is on. The clock reads 999. 9999. You shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. You grip the note tight. Read not. Hey there, Zamindan. It's a spooby game. Adventure. With lots of spoobiness. I'm sorry, Jennifer. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry, Dad. You haunt every step I take, even in this place. It was out of my hands, but still you punish me. I can't be with you now. There is nothing left to do. I'm consumed and confused. This has to end now. Rocking back and forth, consumed by guilt. Man, that heavy breathing. You're pathetic. It was all your fault. Say it. It was my fault? No, please stop. It was all my fault, say it. I didn't really say it. Finally. Stop breathing my left ear. Thanks. That was disturbing, to say the least. Apparently, we were extremely disturbed ourselves. Had to play a game within a game to get the truth out of ourselves. Apparently. So what did we do to our family? Red light is a bulb dipped in deer blood. Nah, that, not in this one. Okay, let's move on to episode two then. Four stories, one nightmare. All right, I this is now from now on. It this is gonna be completely blind. Sometimes you may need to look beyond the. Uh,
Alexia Traverse Healy, Richie Campbell, John McKellen. Starring in Untold Stories or Stories Untold. Written and directed by John McKellen. This is subject 12-19-86-23, new session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander Leading, assisted by Dr. Williams, and in the lab itself, our volunteer, Mr. Asian. Is that a drill? We have artifact 23 in the chamber, recovered from crash site B. At the moment, it appears inert, showing no signs of activity. Experimental. Mr. Asian, instructions for each stage will come through to your terminal. And we need you to follow them exactly. Now, some of this may be unfamiliar, so always reference the manual on your terminal for guides on calibration and procedure. Okay. Once you've calibrated equipment to match our brief, the green light will flash, allowing you to trigger the experiment. Okay. The last thing, huh? Ensure that any equipment non essential to the current experiment is switched off. You cannot proceed until your calibration matches ours. You got it. Let's bring this back. Oh, okay. Subject J1986-MEM is enclosed in solid outer layers. X-ray the artifact to determine its internal structure. The street has different Twilight Zone episodes. I like that idea. It certainly feels like Twilight Zone. Required apparatus, camera, monitor set to X-ray, charge the CC86 X-ray device. TV input modes, R3, IR, XR, RGB, full color, infrared, and X-ray. Okay. Press the keys bracketed in the top menu. Press tab to roll over the test to the test chamber. At the at the chamber, use your mouse cursor to select and interact. Got it. Variable laser generation unit. Okay. That's a frequency. A digital signal generator, as in an oscillator. Uh, not sure about this one. Seems to be some kind of a wave system as well. Uh, sync master. That's the camera up there. Awaiting X-ray data. I wonder how they saw the text adventure part for the switch. Probably, uh, you know, the keyboard pops up on the screen. You have to have it out of the dock, you know. I would imagine that you type it on the uh, screen. That's how I would do it. Charge the CC86 X-ray device. How do I charge it up? Okay, good work. The X-ray is coming through now. There's no visible damage to the surrounding organic material. Uh, no signs of activity either. 
All I'll put is flatlined. Okay, let's begin. Yep. Experiment complete. Surface reaction attempt. Demonstrate the effects of laser light on the object. Try using a low-powered red laser to begin with. Okay. Uh, concentrated light. Required apparatus. Apparatus. So 650 num. Laser 2 light generator and monitor. Set to RGB. Ooh, got it. It's a heart? Looks like a heart? That's in there? <laughs> Had to look it up. They used a box with different words to choose from. Oh. Hey, Specky. Welcome to Spoobidas. Yeah, it's a heart. From first stage. Hey there, Kala. <laughs> I saw Kala just waving it right in front of me, floating away. Demonstrate the effects of laser light on the subject. On the object, now green light. I just saw a tit just grab onto the wall there next to my window. I was just looking around. That was interesting. Just a great tit just going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, it flew off. Wish I had a camera. Yes, a great tit. Stop taking your mice out of a gutter. That's the bird's name. I thought I thought a Tweety Bird. How about that one then? That is that is like the dumbest joke anybody ever makes. I saw a boob. How about that one? Yeah. There are big gazongas on the window. Let's go all out with that stupid joke. Ah. Well, would you look at that? Yeah, it's activated. It seems we have a pulse. Uh huh. Really How? Stable. There's no activity registering in the core. It's possibly damaged. How do we have a pulse? Let's push further. Why should we? It's a heart that is not connected to anything, and it's uh, pulsing. You don't have any. You know, you don't have those birds uh, in Norway? You should, it's a European bird. Test the acoustic resonance properties of the object. Begin with generating 250 hertz uh, sine wave with an amplifier gain set to one. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry if you, if you, if I keep doing all that snorting and everything, got a cold going on. Well, in English, it's called a great tit. Just look up, just Google a picture of a great tit and you'll know what the uh, bird is. Required apparatus. Signal, signal generator set to frequency a waveform amplifier. So I need a sine wave, yes. An amplifier display. So that's what this is. This is the amplifier. How many hertz was it? 250. Mm -hmm. 
Very common, Yarp. Yep. Hey, Cyrodiac. Bearded tit is my fave bird. It's not much of a response. Uh huh. Uh, updating the experiment now. Ukkonen, Ukkonen, Kakkonen. How do I know boys? The frequency 500 sine wave. Amplifier to five. There we go. <laughs> Say hello to the wrong person. It was five hundred, right? Yes. It's a little bit more of a response happening. Seeing some fluctuations in activity. It's shaking. Should we increase the risk of damage? What about the wrong How about changing the wave? Okay, we're gonna go karme beasi. Yes! Let the Yoko Yolta say Arsutta. Yhtä paljon kuin minua. <laughs> se, se kyllä muistaa, ja se on hirvittävä, että sen muistaa vieläkin. Ah, square wave, but maintaining, right. Yeah, that's not good. good that's a huge effect. We can also see on the little window. Okay. I don't think I will trust you, but I'll keep doing this. Maintain the gain and square waveform. Bring it the uh, frequency up to one kilohertz. Okay. Hey, Goblin. Welcome to some weird shit. Yeah, that's definitely doing damage. Well, there it goes. Full activity registry. We did it. Yeah, pop the heart. You've made excellent progress. You're doing great. Thanks. Now we need you to stay calm and try to relax as we go through these next steps. I'm fine. It's just a attempt to alleviate. Just a heart popping. I'm fine. I'm used to viscera and stuff. Experimentations. Happens all the time. Protected casing is off. Proceed to drill the surface. Oh, there was a sphere in the heart. Slightly uncomfortable. We have a situation under control. Not scared, just uncomfortable. And when you're ready, we'll continue. Okay. It's amazing that they still work. Make contact with the artifact. Open the test chamber. I didn't get to do all any IR stuff or any other cool stuff? Or laser? You're doing fine, Dr. Freeman. Good news, everyone! I'm gonna open the case!
You're not what I saw inside there. Look into the eye. Everybody with epilepsy to photos, all frontal sensitivity, look away now. Okay. Maybe clicking it was a bad idea. Yeah, there was an epilepsy warning at the beginning of the game anyway. <laughs> Said that there's lots of photo sensitivity. But why was it in a heart? It's like a conscious black box. It can show you its memories. So I have my own blink? Will translate onto the screen to be something that you can understand. Is this destiny? That you can play out. Or are you a bit? So we're in Tron. I'm gonna make lots of references to you, little guy. New data connection ready. Look into my eye and tell me what this. That thing has seen some shit. You wake up in the cryopod, struggling against gravity, you force yourself up. Impact into the planet's surface has torn a hole in the ship hull. Poison and atmosphere spills in into your craft. You can navigate its memories. You're in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Memory action unavailable. Look object not recognized. Memory action unavailable. Look look object not recognized. Hmm. Old breath. Command not recognized. Hmm. Hey, Red Star. It's not helping me, so... <sighs> Can't tell of the imagery that we saw in the flashes. Don't remember seeing anything in those that could help me out here. But I have no idea what to do here. The airlock door is clamped shut. It is controlled remotely. Hey, Olvi Perkele. Ykkönen, ykkönen, kakkonen. Hätä numero muista. Ykkönen, ykkönen. I'm now compelled to sing that to all Finnish people whenever they appear. Just to see their reactions. Retrace the steps, Mr. Asian. Explore these memories. 
type your commands into the computer. That's what I'm doing. Shut up. It's not as easy as you think. You try to type these. Stupid. So we can't push a button, cannot pull a switch. How do we open this airlock door? They really are not giving me any hints here. Okay, time to unsub and follow them. <laughs> Anybody got any idea? But it is controlled remotely, but where? Where is it remote control? Con remote controlled? Where is the remote control? You tap at the screen and the airlock door splutters to life, slowly opening with a horrendous noise. Ship powers down to silence, having spent the last of its re of the reserves. I'll say it again, if anybody has photo sensitivity, don't look at the screen whenever I look into the eye. You squeeze through the damaged airlock and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. At every breath that brings pain to your chest, you look around to see you are surrounded by mangled metal. Bright lights pour through every gap in the surrounding wreckage. Why does it constantly smell like somebody smoking a cigar? That's what I keep smelling, somebody smoking a cigar. No sorry, just kävi röökillä. No et sä varmaan sikaria polttanu. Tai jos poltit, niin hyvät sulle. It's the tit. Yeah, sure. Yoshi, you got any idea what to do next? Yeah, I thought so. This is a tough one.
Didn't work. Nope. Nothing. Now that's where we just got out from. Fun. Go vehicle. Move metal. That's it. With every ounce of your remaining strength, you move away enough of the wreckage for you to carefully crawl through. The lights that surround you now attack your senses. No. You squint at the light, trying to shield your visor lens at the same time. It is a circle of artificial lights set up around you to illuminate the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people, all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. The silhouette is bipedal and bulky. Some sort of mask covers its face. It beckons you to approach. Then he just mentioned that the, it sounds like... Uh, where they found uh, the wreckage. So I'm assuming that it's uh, looking at us humans. Your heart rate is elevated, but you're doing well. For what it's worth, very few of our test subjects ever make it this far. What? You should be proud of yourself. What? A very, what? Are you telling me that I'm gonna have brain hemorrhage soon? God damn it. Because I have a strong mind. Photosensitive people, look away now. Experimental sciences, yeah. We awake. The room is silent only for the quiet hum of equipment occasional machine beep. Your touch isn't yours. We are all as one. We move together in unison. Cool. We are in a bed, in a small and artificially lit room with a single door. There is some sort of writing pinned to the wall. Adjacent is a display monitor with wires that drape across the room and into our chest. They have tortured us. Symbols seem to indicate that we're on our body they had to cut. We've been butchered and maimed over and over. Apparently still had consciousness even if it was dead. Gotta go now to buy some medicine, alright? Take care, Litvarski. The screen didn't give anything away. Flashing symbols of what could be numbers in rhythm. Ah, the EKG meter. The door in the corner looked atmospherically sealed shut. Uh-huh, yeah. The quarantine room. We can't reach the door, effectively tethered to the machine. What just happened? What's that alarm? There's been a disconnection in quarantine lab 15. We'll find out what's going on. We're still connected to the uh, alien that is in the room. That's what it is. They may, may have pulled this out of it 
But now we're still connected to that one as well. Legion. It's kind of a situation here. This is cool. I'm not scared, actually. Now I'm more fascinated. I want to see what happens. What does this uh, alien do? We yank at the wires protruding from our chest. Together we all scream in pain. This action sets off an alarm, echoing loudly down the adjacent corridor. Okay. Okay, Nathan. See you in an hour. Specimen 20. That vision, it's not a memory, it's happening right now. Mr. Asian, I need you to stop what you're doing, please. I gotta... Anybody else get an SCP feeling out of this? That this should be an SCP? They should contact SCP to contain whatever this is. Pose all sensitive people. Look away now. Lady? Why didn't we see a car with a blinker on and a lady face? I think our memories are getting mixed up. That little ball sure reminds me of Destiny and Portal 2. Are you one of uh, GLaDOS's cores? Didn't think of Portal at all, but now that I think about it... Definitely not Wheatley. Maybe Rage Core? <laughs> Makes all those zombie noises. Through the door we find ourselves in an empty room with a device on the table. It looks familiar. They don't know how it works, but this host does. The door closes behind us and a lock clamps shut. We are alone together. Apple. It was an access code terminal for a wide connection, allowing commanders to commandeer other hosts. Only you, I, we, have access to these codes. It's time to use them. Guilty Spark? <laughs> also a Halo reference. Yeah, Guilty Spark. A lot of things in many stuff. A bit from Tron, Destiny, a Portal 2, Halo. What next? The small orb from uh, uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2. You know, the guy with the weird hat has the little ball with him. Can't remember their names. Yeah, I should actually play those as well. I have the uh, Halo Commander Chief collection on Steam. Should play them. What is that? We haven't seen that before. What is it doing? It's using the tool we recovered from the crash site. It's in our systems. It's sending something across the network. It's broadcasting. <laughs> Mr. Asian, please. We deeply regret what we have put you through. But please understand it was for the greater good. The greater to... good. Rebelling now could be catastrophic. You don't know what this might do to you in the long run. Are we gonna self destruct like a uh, predator when I do this? I don't even know what I'm supposed to do here. This is some weird shit, man.
Anybody got a clue on what this is? I mean, I kind of get it. I don't get it. Up, up, okay. Saw that one. This is a very annoying way of getting this. There we go. Yeah, but it's so difficult to, you know, recognize the patterns. Just constantly flashing the images is not good for even people without uh, photosensitivity because that was just annoying to the eyes. And apparently there were more than one, so they really are a legion. I am one of you now. I guess. Already did it. Apparently. I had epilepsy as a kid, so I'm very sensitive to flashing lights. Yeah. My friend could never play this because flashing lights and otherwise, you know, bright lights cause him a, a huge migraines. He doesn't have epilepsy, but migraines. So, like when we watched uh, we watched uh, Force Awakens together, and he ha he got a huge migraine out of the laser effects. Just a purely bright light cause him. Even sunlight, if he gets too much sunlight in his eyes, it'll cause a big migraine to him. Just, you know, just sensitivity to light. Station process. Actually, let me go. Uh, subtitles on, please. Thank you. I think that's gonna help a little. Some commands may be case sensitive. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a fascinating game. Not really creeped out by it. Except the first uh, episode was creepy. That second one, that was fa just fascinating. But it is like, uh, not the, I wouldn't call this uh, Twilight Zone. I would call this Outer Limits. This feels more like Outer Limits than Twilight Zone. Station 3, do you read me? Give me a sign, man. This storm is getting pretty wild. Now we're getting into Greenland and the thing? Come on, 3, log in. Quit fucking around. There 
he is. Finally, what took you? I was just slowly typing. Station three. I'm right here. I'll take that as a yes. Yeah, but I, I'm right back. here. Should be able to hear you though. Can it's not phasmophobia. Okay. We can chat later, three. Okay. This is pretty serious. I've had a distress call from Central. There's a situation and we have to fire up signal monitoring and relay systems right away. Right oh situation. Right up. I'm assuming it's got something to do with this storm. Whatever it is, it's big to want to involve us. Shit. Okay, what do we do then? Shit. Well, my fucking cabin power isn't holding up in this weather. Oi! So I can't process the signals myself. Watch the fucking language. You need to feed the frequency information through to the backup terminal in station three. And three, you just need to tune, decode, and process. Just refer to the handbook on the microfilm. It'll walk you through it. I've never done any of this stuff, so I'm not going to be much help, I'm afraid. It's simple, honestly. You could do this in your sleep. Yeah, honestly. Okay, first one is due to appear in a minute or so. Have a quick read of that microfilm handbook. It should be on your left. I'm going to get suited up and restart the generator. Don't fuck it up. We thank you, we all... Okay, three, we're up. Do whatever it is you're supposed to do. We. Well, the Central Monitoring Division would have liked to thank you in the event of national security emergency, you will be asked to monitor and input live <laughs> without question or hesitation okay should such a situation arise all intruders shall should be in case of <laughs> your 14th and 15th molar teeth what why does the guy work on communications if he doesn't say anything ever but I can do many things in sleep. I can't when when I when I wake up, you know. I'm sure he works here, but uh, right now the microphone just doesn't work. Please note that any instructions carrying the GCS flag must dealt must be dealt with as a matter of urgency. All right. What do you say, pal? Contents. Cover, forward contents, eagle, sigma, abacus, portfolio, Kansas mask, ingenue, canvas, whiskey, landscape, orange, centaur, home, jennifer, sacrifice, drive, chevron, sibling. Appendix A, Morse code. Appendix B, phonetic, conversion chart, GCS chart. Closing. Why does it say sacrifice and jennifer and home there? That's like the first episode. Drive Chevron sibling. What is happening with this? What is going on? Eagle! On receipt of this callback code, the conversion operators must input the following command lines into the terminal and execute. Sys X minus F and minus Y minus con is true. Enter. Allocate. Execute. Input terminal code, hitting enter at the end of each line. Type execute to run the program. A shame they never expanded on this game. I'd pay good money to have more episodes. I wonder why they didn't. When callback is received, enter the following permission code.
Something tells me these numbers are important. So I'm gonna write them down no matter what. Might unlock something like an Easter egg, you know? Yeah, that's Morse code. It's just... The GSC chart, chart, not chart. Oh, it could be chart. Opens a verbal command speech or something. None, none. Okay, we... <laughs> I think the more important stuff is right here, these append appendixes. Especially the numbers. Ei paatu. Ykkönen, ykkönen, kakkonen, tai numero muista. Ykkönen, ykkönen, kakkonen, tai numero muista. I think they're clear enough of pictures. Ugh. Transmission broadcast frequency. Broadcast authorization key.
Good morning, Gildan. Okay, my light here just turned green and the signal stopped. So I think you did it right. Next one coming up in 30 seconds, apparently. Don't leave them hanging too long. I don't know what they're for. But I know we have to make them top priority, or I'll get shit. Of course, don't worry, we'll keep on top of it. Alright, you got it. Okay, there it is. These things, aren't they? <clears throat> Oh. Fourteen zero one two twenty six fourteen zero one two twenty six fourteen zero one two Chevron, all right. Chevron, Chevron. One, two. Fourteen zero one two. Yeah, shut up. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Thank you for the host, Snack.
I thought I got it right. How oh, is that last one not right? It is. GET dot int XYZ. Oh. Where X is second, Y is fifth, and Z is sixth number from the broadcast code. Second, fifth, and sixth. There we go. Thanks, three. Just pushing this update to the transmitter now. Getting the hang of it, huh? Yep. Next one coming up. Um, one. What does GCS mean? It's the. Yes. What do you mean? Our company. Yeah, no, this next one has come through with an additional note. GCS three equals E one V one M one. I've not seen it before. Check the microfilm. Might be something in there about it. Listen. Let me know when you're done with that one. I haven't heard back from the transport team and I'm starting to worry. Sure thing. Okay, here it is. Whoa. Okay, that's different. Flashing red screen. Yeah, quite the warning sign. Shit. Something's going on. The last two must have just been testing the system. Tune it as normal and I'll see what I can find out once I get these goddamn lights on. Now it's the Morse code. No? I think it's zero nine. It's definitely ending on short at the second number. It's three, not four. X largest number from original broadcast and smallest number from original broadcast. Does the original broadcast mean the first broadcast we heard? Is that what it means?
It is what you think, Olavi. <clears throat> Damn it. Pushing the wrong buttons. Ah, not 40, it's 4G. There we go. Okay, one, we're done. Nothing is happening, really <laughs> good. What did you want? I'm about to head outside to look at this generator. My cabin is completely out. Listen, I just checked the roster and we were supposed to hear from the supply team three days ago. But I've had nothing. No Scorched reason. Earth? 18 targets? The storm? I hope not. Three. Can you monitor a range for me? They use an emergency signal somewhere between eight, eight and a half thousand range. FM. See if you can track it down for me. That's our supplies for the next six months. If they turn back, what do we do? We can reschedule. I'm more worried that they didn't turn back. Otherwise, we'd be having a drink by now. The boat was called 20F. God, yeah. Okay. Three. Eight, eight and a half thousand FM somewhere. See if you can pick up a distress signal or something. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm on it. That's German. No way, that's not German. It sounded German, but it may not be. Icelandic? Because we're supposed to be in Greenland. It says Greenland the research base. So I think that's Icelandic. Hey, Anna Three. Eight to eight and a half thousand. I'm listening to Icelandic here. Shut up. It's fascinating. He sounds bored. Is anyone there? We don't have enough supplies to last whatever this is out. We have some on board, but it's not enough. I feel like Windows, not getting any connection with the microphone. Or them. A mess with our GPS and send us straight into the office. What on earth is he talking about? We're hold up here. He's got word from Central that New York is falling. Everyone's gone there now. I thought us being so remote would give us time, maybe, but I can see them coming. I saw the Scorched Earth 18 targets. Alien invasion, maybe? One, are you there? Are you hearing this? Yeah, I'm definitely Stop tired. Three, do the same. What do you mean? Did you hear the report? I just got a call from Station B at the coding. Something is happening. I don't know what, but they said we had to lock up and stay in our cabin. Then it went dead. What are you talking about? Just do it. Uh. They're here. Who? Uh, who are they? Yeah. Russians? Shit, Chinese? Mom, there's another GCS signal coming in. Do we... Aliens? Is it still? Yeah. As long as the GCS number is going up, we're helping a lot of people. It was three last time. It's six this time. What does it mean? That's good. That's good. Just process the signals. That's it in. I 
I don't like these sounds that we're hearing. Almost sounds like an alien speech. But definitely like somebody's talking. There's the same thing. I like this. This is fascinating. My Zulu Sierra Hotel Bravo Echo My Zulu Sierra Hotel Bravo no, not Discord. I'm not going to Discord. My Zulu Sierra Hotel Bravo Echo. My Zulu Sierra Hotel Bravo Echo. My Zulu Sierra Hotel Bravo Echo My Zulu Sierra Hotel Bravo Echo I'm not sure about the uh, first word My Zulu Sierra so I'm looking hotel for the words what sounds Echo. like it my Zulu Sierra hotel Bravo I'd say Echo. Mike but that's him my Zulu Zulu Sierra Hotel, Hotel. Bravo Echo My Zulu I definitely say Mike. Yeah, that should be it. Unless I'm supposed to put them into numbers. Echo My Zulu Sierra Hotel Bravo 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 Echo Sorry, is it these codes down here? That I need to look at? I don't get it. Sierra Hotel Bravo Echo Alpha phonetic conversion, that's what it is. But I don't know how these numbers work. Sierra Hotel Bravo Echo. So it's on the third column. Hey there, Azivan. My Zulu 
Sierra, Hotel, Bravo, Echo. Never noticed the uh, zoom and such. Thanks, Azzy. Thank you for helping. Hotel. Bravo. Echo. My. Zulu. Sierra. Hotel. Bravo. Echo. My. Zulu. Sierra. Hotel. Bravo. Echo. All right, got it. My. Zulu. Sierra. Hotel. Bravo. Echo. Centaur. There we go. That helps a lot that I know now there is a zoom up thing on it. Three. There's something I don't know what I'm looking at. Cabling? One, I can see something above three's cabin. One of the power lines down. Central launch. Launch successful? Are we launching nukes? I don't know, but something slid down. It's above me. Shit, it's above me. It's over station three, too. They're here. What's here? Jesus, one, what the fuck is out there? Aliens, apparently. It's fine, you'll be fine. Oh, there goes one. Shit, here's another signal. GCS7 equals E1 V5 M1. One, what the hell? It's flashing urgent. Sacrifice, huh? That's always a delight. Guys, are any of you walking around in that storm? Four? Crazy. You'll get yourself killed. No one is outside. You're seeing things for. Station three, this is station four. Do not go outside. Don't go out there. Stay inside. Lock up. Do not go out there. Yeah, I'm not going out there at all. I'm doing stuff. I'm working.
Is there anything you don't hate in games? I swear games just piss you off more than entertain you. There's uh, just some things about games that he hates. Things? What things? A receipt of this callback code, a conversion number is, must be input the following command lines in the terminal, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So X is uh, numbers one, two, three from the original broadcast represent the longitude, numbers four, five, six. The original broadcast represent the latitude, authorization word from appendix C. All right. So zip there. Then this definitely feels like we're going to blow ourselves up. Apparently, we're gonna make the ultimate sacrifice and all that. Okay, so uh, it was. USB 8150, USB broadcast 8150, process the total broadcast numbers. Total is... Total of broadcast numbers? What? Hey, long shot! Well, let's just hope that uh, you can work it out, Gabriel, a little bit. It's a that kind of a thing, though, Gabriel. It's a long process, so it'll take time before it, it really happens, you know. But I'm just glad that you can work it out or start working on it. That's always a good thing. So it's either Tesla or Alexander, depending on the total over 30. I don't, I don't understand this. The total num of broadcast numbers. What does it exactly mean? Then I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. The process total of broadcast numbers. Well, let's try Alexander first. Alright, got it. Let's blow up. Initializing. Open broadcast all launch. Transmitting codes. Three. James. The last signal hasn't sent. My terminal is going crazy demanding a response. I think the wind has misaligned the transmitter or something. We need to go out to it. Please, James. I'm sorry, but I can't get out. I'm trapped. You'll still be able to hear me, though. Go. Go. I don't think it's a good idea. And apparently we got knocked out. Bye, station. We're dead, I guess.
Oh. Now it really is the thing. I thought something was walking next to me, but just the flapping of the uh, flags. Can I at least uh, get a flamethrower? Or an axe? Or glasses on because our vision is very blurry. Yeah, I thought he was like trying to get uh, up really fast and stumble to the ground, but then he got dragged out, so. <laughs> Certainly it wasn't him doing this. All these mountains and snow and everything reminds me of the beginning of Outcast. I shouldn't be thinking of Outcast. I want to play it again then. Although it's a fantastic game. <laughs> Just stick to the rope. Outcast? I thought that one started outside an asylum. Outlast is the one in the asylum. Outcast is the one where we go into the parallel universe with the Talon and such. It's just one letter difference, you know. It's easy to make a mistake. Since I assumed the worst and know every media cliche which signals it, I knew right away that he'd been attacked. Yeah, but why they why did it just drag us out but let us live? That's what I don't get. They should have torn us apart like with everything else. Why are we still alive? Maybe he's infected. I don't know if it's the thing kind of a situation. It certainly seems like an, an evasion type of a situation. And we're trying to launch nukes or whatever to attack him. Whatever it is attacking. Fire missiles! But I'm le tired. Well, first I can have then fire missiles. I can't feel my legs, James. No, I can't feel anything. I'm running in the snow. I'm so tired. Why is there why are there cars? That's the blinking light! That's the car we saw in the previous episode. What? They're connected somehow. Are these aliens now from the previous? Shut up, Siren Head. What are you doing? These are somehow connected to each other, these episodes. He's coming back. Yeah, are we still us? I, mean, I think so, yeah. So I can add something else to the list of things I like in games. I also like when something turns out to be better than it seemed. Hmm. Uh, 
I guess I love optimistic subversions of negative tropes. That must be why I love certain parodies such like uh, Paradigm. Anybody else hear that whispering? I think we're going crazy. I don't know. He's coming back. I think that I think this might have been an experiment of some kind. Nothing's really happening. It's all in our mind. James, everyone is waiting on you. You need to wake up. See what I mean? I think we already got invaded in the second episode, and this is just us not accepting the uh, lo the orbs. James, go to them. Tell them what happened. Tell who? Tell what? What's happening? the fuck? I didn't even notice the tentacles. What the fuck is that thing? Now we're going into some Cloverfield shit. Or Cthulhu, is that you? What the hell's happening here? I seriously did not notice that until I got here. What? Why is the first episode? Welcome back. Thanks. What the? What the? What the? What the? What? Wait! 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 What? I, I'm, I'm so confused. I mean, it was. No way. The. The conclusion better explain everything and be ex freaking awesome. Because now I I need to play the last session. I need to play this. This is... Oh, I'm glad, Eldritch. I'm glad I never finished this game. I only played episode one before. Never finished the game. Now I'm glad I'm here to experience this. This is why I said it was separate episodes while they're not. You tricked us! You trickster! Good. I'm too tired to have fully followed how surreal this is, so no broken brain for me. Trust me, I am... I... This just broke my brain, Gabriel. Trust me. I... My brain is... If you find yourself stuck, try to look around for clues. Game. Please be responsive, not not responsive. Thank you. you. Scared me there for a second. Hey Nathan, things are a little bit effed up in the game right now. You missed out on a great episode. I'm sorry to say, but this is gonna spoil spoil that for now. everything for you. So, you should check the VOD later, for sure. No, this is the final episode. Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. On a wheelchair. We're a patient. That wasn't breaking the forest wall, that was just us watching TV, apparently. I don't know, it's not feeling it like anything. Other than... Don't worry. Try and get you out of here eventually. This is all what the fuckery right now. I have no idea what to believe in. Oh, 
What? This is not an observation room. This is an interrogation. Through in the next room. Just relax, and we'll get started in a moment. This is an interrogation room. Hardly observation, I'd say. Get back here. Tell me what's happening. Right, Mr. Asian. Now are you ready? Ah, we're still James. Okay. Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. I will never be ready. This is subject 12-19-86-23, new session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander, leading, and in a room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. Alexander was in the second episode. Know, James has recently recovered from a two-week coma following his accident. The car accident? In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Episodes. Yes. I've always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. So that's what the episodes were. Do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this, James. It's time to remember. The episode thing in my title of Sin Lao mean that if the game is long, it's gonna be like episodic streams. So this would be stream one of the game. Look into it. It's like, think of TV episodes. I mean, it, I got it from Gabriel. He always called my streams episodes, so I took it from him. It's a good way of, you know... Like with uh, like with uh, Dying Light, I'm on episode... Uh, I Yesterday was episode three of the following, and the whole... Main game was like episode up to episode 14. So it's like watching TV kind of a thing. Back to this, huh? Ah, back here. Right. In your most recent episode, you recalled a false memory of a remote weather station. Yeah. You were isolated from the rest of the world. Yes. Locked inside your coma. Uh-huh. We interacted with you daily. Central operations message Sorry. authentication. Coma. Your family would do number puzzles with you. Anything really to bring you back. People needed answers, James. Do you remember? So those were my family members? I'm here for you, James. It's at 5610FM. You can't miss it. Okay. Was Fallout episode 30? Yeah, it would be. Although Fallout doesn't go up to episode 30. I can play that game in uh, about 60 hours. <clears throat> so it could go up to episode 20. Actually, when I did stream it... It didn't go up... I, I think it went only up to, like, episode... Or part... Uh, maybe 15? So I played it through in 30 hours or so. Or rather, 40 hours. I don't know. Look up on YouTube. See how many episodes it is. Yeah, I wonder how, how I cannot miss it. The only line there. Road traffic accident report file from Walson Police Department. Fatal accident, James Asian. 
Injured. It says fatal accident, but we were only injured, not deceased. Pleasant Hill Forest Road. Number of vehicles, two. So I guess the other one died. One may wave you drive. Station wagon, white. Date of birth, 18168, maybe? 63? Something. Hey there, famine. This is twenty F twelve nineteen eighty six twenty three zero four. Type in the numbers, James. Gassinas. There. Now I can read this. Because I want to read this. Arrived on scene to discover two cars that had been involved in a head near head-on collision. Mr. Asian found lying out down outside his vehicle with head injuries. An ambulance was immediately called. His passenger was trapped in the vehicle in critical condition from wounds sustained in the collision. Driver of the Blue Sudan, Mr. Hennings, and was found dead on arrival. It was noticed uh, that there was a strong smell of whiskey from the driver and a empty whiskey bottle on the passenger seat. Mr. Asia was questioned on scene. He described an oncoming blue sedan, sedan being clearly out of control, which he swerved to avoid. Mr. Asia's passenger was his sister. The driver of the blue sedan is an ex-police officer of 20 years. Jennifer. Sister. The first episode. That's why he, he feels guilty for getting her killed. This, uh, Nathan, this uh, micro fish uh, has been the whole thing in the previous episode. That's where I look up the codes to use on that machine there. There's nothing here. See where this goes. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. Audio archive. Yeah. Reporting officer. Finally. NS1 Officer Williams. Interview. Seven thousand FM. guy. He's got something to hide. A light flickers off. So, we were the one drunk driving then, maybe? Possibly? Maybe that's the guilt. That we were the drunk driver. This doesn't make sense to you. No, it doesn't, especially when there's text appearing in front of my eyes. Do 
You step out into the hospital ward, only it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurry. Not too blurry. All of your episodes were recorded to tape. This is the fourth. Driving home, don't have that fifth pint. How about no pints at all? I mean, even one pint of uh, beer can be fatal to somebody. First steps to recovery. Home care, travel and chaperones, living with new conditions, rehabilitation, some therapy, and can't really tell what the last one is called. 0229023144 or make an appointment with your GP. Yeah, I played Stanley Parable, yes. On my own, not on not on stream, just on my own. Someone else is here. Yeah, you you think? You grab the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. Hand sanitizer. Sanicare. Clean hands save lives. Especially these days. You wash your hands, but in this place it feels pointless. So I'm guessing it says that our vision is, you know, blurry, but I think it's because we're just nearsighted. But here we can see fine, but when we get closer... Bleh. How appropriate, you fight like a cow. I mean... Uh, Yeah, far-sighted, not near-sighted, yeah. I always forget that if you can't see closely, that's far-sighted, because far, it means that you can see far, but not near. I always forget that, and that the terms are, you know, weirdly the opposite of what it should be. But then again, it makes sense, because far-sighted means you see far. So, somebody was here. Uh, why do they have just standing lamps? Doesn't make sense. Well, then again, it's not supposed to make any sense. We're not supposed to be here. You spend most waking moments in here. Ah, Futuro. The house abandoned. Yeah. And number puzzles. Fly safe, Greenland. Ah, this is where we got all the ideas are for our episodes. There's episode one. There's uh, number puzzles for all the uh, games. And there's Greenland for episode three. And there's the game itself. For the first episode. You only caught a glimpse of the room. I can, you guess that's why there is no detail here. Huh. <clears throat> so this is the hospital. But it's only blurry because we are not sure of what we've seen. Mostly played ukulele with the oldest kid. Huh. I've never played ukulele. The waiting area is dark, but you feel a presence right behind you. Don't you be saying that, bitch. Don't be turning this now into a freaking ghost game. Although the first episode was very spooky. Someone breathes on your neck, standing over you. No thanks. So the key that we got, what is it for? 
What is it good for? You fear dread in the pit of your stomach. I don't want to walk into the light. I don't think that's a good idea. Rah. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to 10 and give me 100 joules. Now we know where we got the second episode idea. Because we died. It, it, they were pumping our heart back, joules. you know. Give us their life. Come on. See what I'm doing. Get this on the screen now. It's so nice that I have to do it, the guy who's dead. Did I already charge it up? I mean, this is supposed to be the charging up. I'm trying. I forgot already what you said. Help? I'm doing something wrong. Help. I can't see what I'm doing. Get this on the screen now. What do you want on the screen? I don't know. I mean, you keep telling me to get it on the screen, but I don't know what the hell you want. I didn't listen. I didn't know I needed to do this. Do any of you guys remember what the fuck we're supposed to do? I'm gonna turn everything off, start over. I'm just gonna start over. Let's listen to this doctor. I mean, we should be dead already. Start talking, mister. You're annoying me now. See what I'm doing. Get this on the screen now. Ah, there we go. So that's up to ten, and Five. 
Next step. Come on, hundred jewels. Charging up full to ten. It's up up at the one hundred and amp is ten. At least it should be. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It is 100 joules. It is up to 10. What the fuck do you want me to do next? I don't understand any of this. There we go. Clear. I had the X-ray machine on. First stage. Let's try higher. Two hundred joules. Keep the amp charge to ten. Two hundred joules. Keep the charge at ten. Let's go. Clear. Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. Three sixty. Charge full. So this is the episode two. On, 360, hurry. Clear. Clear. Well, would you look at that? It seems we have a pulse. Yep. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an X-ray right away. Where are we with that X-ray? Get it going now, please. <sighs> Looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Switch on a drill, please. Anything else you want me talking from me? Yep, it's on. Anything else you want me to turn off? Can we get this on the screen, please? It's on the screen! Drill is on, screen is on, what else do you want from me? Uh, this is this is even more confusing than episode 2 was. I can't see what I'm doing, get this on the screen now. There we go. Mr. Asian. You've made excellent progress. You're doing great. We need you to stay calm and try to relax while we go through the next steps. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. So I guess that's the reason why we went into a coma. That drill. Why aren't we back at the episode one? One of them didn't survive? Aww. Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you'll leave on a six month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room. In the living room as usual, you don't recognize a soul. Uh. All friends of Mom and Dad. The youngest is probably twice your age.
I tried to open the doors for him, but they are a bit panicky. They are. You push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever, only this time the folks have put a big, uh, great big banner up across the main wall. Half-finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Bon voyage, James! Finally, not the family disappointment. Can I go to the kitchen? They say all the best parties are in the kitchen. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which sits proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. It looks great! Maybe later. Okay. Bottles of beer and half-drunk glasses of wine. As much as you love to, you promised you'd stay downstairs with the party. <laughs> now is not the time to leave. Party is for you, after all. You exchange pleasantries. Not a smile, not a smile. As welcoming as ever. Folks in great banner up across the main hall. Half finished drinks abandoned almost two hours until the stairs lead up. You aren't drinking someone else's drink, get your own. Let's go to the kitchen. I guess uh, because we were so anxious and everything because of this party with all these strangers, started drinking. You pour yourself a drink. Nice to loosen up. I don't know what you're trying to use. Food. It says food. Get roast. Maybe later. Back in the day when you had to get up to change channel, yeah? We had that kind of a TV as well. Not the, this uh, design, it was different. But you know, old school. I don't know, Specky. I haven't felt like playing Red Dead Redemption in a long while. Maybe at some other point. But not today. I mean, the story mode isn't even complete yet. I still have some things to do in it, but I just haven't felt like playing it. I'll let you know when I'm done with the story. Half-finished drinks, horizontal surface, there's lead up. So when is it time for us to leave? Tomorrow you leave on a six-month trip abroad. 
I don't think that ever happened because of the situation of the whole game. They go up to the bedrooms and bed. Ho up. Weep. Well, we can tell you're not in the US because of the digital clock. Yeah. From what I can tell, this is a British production, for sure. You need to tell me which room you want to go to. How about I just stop? Damn it. Exit kitchen. I have no idea what to do. Not a smile, not a smile, get some drink. Drink. You pour yourself a drink. Drink. Did the bridge use 12 hour 24? I think it's 24. I think. Not sure if Goblin is still here. He would answer that question. I mean, Goblin was here, but... Don't think he's anymore. Help me! I don't know what to say, what to do! I'm... I am... So stuck right now. I shouldn't be stuck here because this is the end of the freaking game and I have no idea what to do. Just as you are about to head inside the utility room, Jen places her hand on your shoulder. You hug, you're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you are enjoying the party. Are we? Yeah, sure. I mean, let's be nice to her. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway, and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. You pour Jen a drink and one of Warrior's head of two. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. He, she, she always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Yes. You tell her yes, that you have packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not fuck up so much. She's gonna miss you. You're going to miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at approving faces. There is so much to do for this move. Can't mess it up. But first, a drink. You pour in down another drink. Anything to move the night along. You're about to go to the hall when you notice the utility room doors open. A first. You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys, ceiling to floor racks. 
A collector, although he doesn't actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around, around it and a card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25 year old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. So he was the drunk one, not the police officer of 20 years. That's why he's so guilty and why this game happened. With your whiskey in hand, you take in the room around about you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Thanks, dad. I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> drink whiskey. You take a swig. It's probably the best and the strongest you've tasted ever. Just wow. Drink more whiskey. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give the thumbs up to dad across the room. He nods and winks. This is not good. But we know what this leads up to. You go back out to the holiday. A few bumps and laughs on the way through and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mis mixing with tears. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, uh, ah, it was Jennifer that we saw. Sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. Yeah, she died. We did the best we could. I'm so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. You are standing in the hallway. Something has stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. Yeah, yeah, we can talk in the car. Go get your keys. You'd love to call it a night, but Jen is waiting patiently. Doors to the kitchen and living room lead from here, while stairs take can take you up. Ah, oh, stairs take can take you up. Good to know. You're sure your keys are in the living room? The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on the chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. Tears immediately start to appear in her eyes. My son, off to America! She gives you a hug. Okay. I get that the story is meant to discourage drunk driving, but I strongly disapprove of its methods. Yeah. Not the best way. 
But the British is known for having very gory style of warnings about things. If you've ever seen their warning of not to touch electricity. It's quite the commercial. Uh, a, quite the PSA. Drink song coasters like proper civilized people. You can't see your keys. You wouldn't drink a car. It is designed to give you a highly negative and irrational memory associated with the idea of drunk driving. They're using trauma-based conditioning. Or they could be showing that actions have consequences, yeah. I mean, pretty much both the exclamations are correct. But you gotta remember, Eldritch, Gabriel always psychoanalyzes these games and points out all the negative stuff about them. I think. They bypass your restless, then says by using surreal imagery, it sets you up to expect one thing, then shock you again. No, I'm just talking about, you know, uh, just out of my ass, Gabriel. Trying to be funny, but it's not really coming out funny. Sorry. Your mom's collection of wines and spirits. Definite, definite, definitely no keys in here. Oh, you're talking to uh, Meltrus. Sorry. You're standing back in the hallway, a bottle of whiskey in hand, but no car keys. Jim points to the living room and sighs as she puts on her coat. I mean, she's pointing to the living room, but we didn't find the keys in there. You're sure your keys are in the living room? She's totally in her element here. She always loved being the host. Hmm. You need to look for them. They must be either in the kitchen or in the living room. Well, they're not here. So. Empty handed, you headed back out into the hall. Maybe your keys are in the kitchen. Kitchen is busy. Way too many people crammed in here, but I guess this is where the food and drink are at. Guests are like a set of vultures peeking at the roast on the kitchen counter. Your dad is locking up the utility room. That tells you to take your sister home, but to go slow since you've had a few drinks already. It's difficult to move around in here between all the people and the kitchen table. The table is a mess. Party food mixed, the unclaimed drinks used napkins. No keys, though. It's been picked to the bone. Nothing but a bony carcass remains. Ah, that was the carcass in the memory of the in the first episode.
if I didn't find the keys in the living room or the kitchen. But I can't go upstairs, because the game will allow me to, but I think it would be there. Your dad has left the utility room. He seems much more at ease now that he doesn't need to guard his pride and joy. I have no idea where the keys are. I've looked everywhere. What am I missing? All friends of mom and dad in this room. They're all being very pleasant to you. They have no idea where you left your car keys. The exchange pleasantries, not a smile, not a smile. Interesting that I cannot look at the people here. Oh, where are the keys? God damn. No keys, no living room, no kitchen. I can't find the keys anywhere. There's no point till you find those car keys. Yeah, but where the fuck are they? I've looked everywhere. What the hell am I missing? Coffee table, a drinks cabinet, one of the chairs is overflowing with jackets and coats. Ah! There it is. Friends in conversation, jackets and coats everywhere.
You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. There we go, finally. Keys in hand, you head back into the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She has work in the morning, and no one else in uh, is in any fit state to drive. I guess she doesn't notice that we reek of freaking whiskey. We got a whiskey bottle in our hand and we're drunk. You can handle it, though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? Mm. You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. The cold air hits you. You're glad you have your jacket with you. There's a dusting of snow around you as you step down the, from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house and the car sits at the front of the house. She's wrapped up, tired. Time to get her home. You fumble with the car handle, confused until Jen tells you maybe use the key in your hand. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car glove box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. Tells you that it's for when you return. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around the back to get power and lights on. Also found something at the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. It's time to go. You try to turn the ignition with sheer willpower despite holding keys in your hand. I'm sorry, I don't understand. I just wanted to burst it on in flames. It takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. You turn the key in the ignition and the car roars to life. The car squeals but stays stationary. Jen's just releasing the brake, giving you a wide-eyed stare. You know, it might be a little bit drunk here. You very hesitantly release the handbrake. You put the car in gear and pull out the drive away, li drive away like a first-time driver. You, I am driving, very drunk, on the road towards the town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. This shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. It is left or right. You can't remember. I'm sorry, I don't understand. You don't want to, but you had better ask Jen for its directions. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. You turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you are on the right road, you now you loosen up and you put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. No. I'm sorry. <clears throat> slow down. That's not what really happened, though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you. Crazy sister. Strange. There's a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really so. Like, so much. Swerve. You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The outside joins the inside. The whole world sake, pull over. around you begins to scream. James! It was at this very moment, wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister. Your parents. Yourself. Your pants. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seat belt struggles against gravity trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes spill into your car from the engines. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of here.
You can't move the wreckage from uh, around her. It would be too dangerous. Save yourself. You can't move. Your seat bed is still in place. You release your seat self from the seat. Gravity takes over as you slump onto the roof of the car. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car has smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You're standing holding your whiskey and your dad's note and flashing lights are approaching at, the, at a distance. What car? The other blue car or yours? Go to blue car. The door is jammed. You don't have time for messing around like this, James. The door is jammed. Use the whiskey. Yes, good, James. That's ex what exactly do you want to do with the whiskey? Pour whiskey? Well, that's not smart thinking, James, is it? They will eventually find it there and it will link it to you. Put whiskey in blue car. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle up to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then very deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. A circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people, all staring. One figure steps out the silhouette and walks towards you. It is like the interrogation. The silhouette is a police officer and in uniform. He beckons you to approach. As you approach the man, the pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in your head increases. You fall to the ground at his feet. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. Who? That accident. That poor man. Oh, Jennifer. Me. You have to remember. Was all your fault. Yeah. All his fault that he tried to put the blame on somebody else. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and wrecked all of our lives. And you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. In dark water. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. Say it. Tell them. Listen to yourself. James. Still trying to run from his responsibilities, I see. Do you not understand? No, I get it, but I'm assured that James does. This episode you're having must come to an end. Stop. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Haitian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Uh -huh. Although I don't suspect it'll take you anywhere. 
and I think he'll be with us for quite some time. Can yeah, but afterwards they will take us somewhere. Shows. I'll see you tomorrow. Kutittaako päätä? Jaa, pikkasen vaan. Vaikka mä kävin kyllä suihkussa. Eh! I can say only one thing. This game was, was, a, was freaking fantastic. This was awesome. I really liked this. Totally what I was not expecting, you know. I didn't even know what I was expecting, some, you know, spooky stories and such, but this was even more disturbing than I expected. Definitely. Small but awesome, yeah, yeah. Definitely a cautionary tale. Devolver Digital, you know, published this game. And also did some other stuff with it. But it's a, just the publishing. Devolver Digital mostly is a publishing service. Hey there, Izzy's. You've been in lurking, okay. An awesome game. I really am glad that I actually finally played this through. Really enjoyed it. And now it says there, Centra Vid, Sessions 1 to 4, James Asian, Dr. Alexander. <laughs> All comes to a close. Man, what a trip. Now I gotta think of what else to play on the mornings. <laughs> <laughs>